seconds. And, of course, on today's show, the big topic will be the impeachment of this corrupt uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, Mayorkas. All right, here we go. Stand by. 13 seconds. Five. On the air since 1977, it's the Steve King Show with Brian Craig. It sure is. Welcome to the program, everyone. It is Wednesday, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Oh, man. I had to go by Walgreens this morning to... Um, there we go. Got to hit that button. All right, I had to go by Walgreens this morning to get some uh, saline nasal spray, and, uh, and something else, too. I got some Twizzlers, and I could not believe how many guys were at Walgreens this morning at, I don't know, 4.30 in the morning doing what? Buying Valentine's Day cards and trying to get home before their wives woke up. Oh, boy, those are some guys that could be in very big trouble. All right, welcome, everyone. We've got a lot to cover. My name is Brian Craig. You are listening to Florida's longest-running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. We've got a lot to cover this morning. And, of course, we're going to talk about the impeachment of this incredibly corrupt Secretary of Homeland Security, Mayorkas. And, you know, what's going to happen is they're going to have a Senate trial, and things are so par uh, partisan. I mean, we can barely get this guy impeached, right, by one vote. And this isn't the first time they voted. They couldn't get a pass before. I mean, this guy, Mayorkas should not only be impeached, he should be arrested and charged with treason. And the trial in the Senate, unless there's some massive change and miracle, the trial in the Senate will end with him remaining in office, which is an acquittal because things are so partisan. The Department of Homeland Security, you know, we didn't have it before 9-11. And after 9-11, when all the information came out about how the hijackers were living and training here in the United States, and there was, you know, stories from investigations. Who knows how true this is? You can't, how can you trust anything with, with a government that arrests presidents of the United States? But what they said was, is there was all kinds of information that could have stopped 9-11, but the different intelligence agencies were off doing their own thing. They didn't share information. All of our security was really involved in international, not homeland defense, because in all the wars, we've been so far removed from the world wars, being here in North America, that it wasn't an issue. The Department of Homeland Security was created to protect the homeland. And with Mayorkas, you have a guy who has completely opened the border, probably just following orders like those guys at Nuremberg, but whose orders is he following? Obama? Probably. And I don't know if there's a way to put a number on it, but how many Americans are dead because Mayorkas has been allowing millions of illegals to come into this country. How many millions of people are dead due to crime and drug overdose? How many millions of people aren't dead but have been victims of crime because of Mayorkas? And the, the way that the Uniparty is handling this, when, when the Uniparty, we, you know, that includes the Republican establishment, I mean, we can barely get this guy impeached. It was difficult. I should be arrested. Um, it's, it's twisted what's going on here. It really, truly is twisted. You know, you, you look at the crime wave that's going on when you, you have illegals beating down and robbing New York City police officers getting let out on bail. They got one of them locked up in juvie. Big freaking deal. You know, hardly a day goes by that there aren't stories in the news somewhere of someone being victimized due to, the, due to crime committed by an illegal. 
There's no climate refugee crisis that's all made up. They're, they're not here seeking asylum from oppression in Venezuela. They, you know, Latin America has always been corrupt. Venice, Venezuela is how South America has always been. It's all, South America has always been run by very, very corrupt dictators, and everybody else is a peasant. So, you know, these are all lies. And what, what's going on here is simple. The Democrats are losing power. They have lost touch with the pulse of the American people. The Democrats have been rejected not just by working people that used to support them back in the union days. They're losing black voters in droves. You know, even gays are voting Republican. They're losing Hispanics. Every group, every, women, every group that the young people, every group that the Democrats took for granted as part of their base since the end of the Second World War, mainly since the Vietnam era, they've, they've lost. So what they're doing is they're bringing in this new population by the millions, literally, so that they can have a peasant class in here that is dependent upon them for everything. You know, uh, Marco Rubio did a presentation on the floor of the Senate the other day and he was talking about retirees here in Florida with their Social Security. They're getting less than any, uh, and they've worked all their life and paid into the American system. And they're, they're getting less money by far, half, sometimes less than half, of what an illegal who's 23 years old is getting who's been in the country for 23 minutes. He did a whole presentation on that this week, uh, Marco Rubio in the Senate. So they're moving these people here, they're, and, and I know Greg Abbott and some others are, are doing some work and bringing the attention to the liberals, but they're also being uh, strategically relocated in this country to affect congressional districts. You understand that? You know, a lot of people wonder, why are some cities sanctuary cities? Why would they want to do that? Well, th when the illegals come there, there's all kinds of money to be made. Right? Just by the illegal students in the schools or the local hospital getting government money. James O'Keefe did some amazing reporting last week. I talked about it a little bit. He was at uh, one of these de uh, detention centers in a uh, converted hotel. Was it Arizona? or no It was either Arizona or Nevada he did that. Remember that last week? And there's, there's a lot of money being made by a lot of people in this process. So that's one part of it. But I'll tell you this. They really should check Mayorkas to find out if he's got any gold bars in the closet. Just like Senator Menendez. Because what Mayorkas is doing is obvious. I mean, he's in collusion with China and the cartels. If you're on hold, stand by. I'll take calls after the first break, okay? I don't have time to give a caller uh, much time to talk now. So if you hang in there, we'll go to the calls after the break. But um, this border crisis is not just the cartels. It's mainly China. China is attacking us on many, many fronts. I talk about this a lot. But this, this fentanyl that the illegals are bringing over here is manufactured in China. China ships it to Mexico, gives it to the cartels, and then they... I, can you really call this smuggling? It's not smuggling. They just walk across with it. And they're bringing in the, the fentanyl poison with the illegals, the cartels. Mayorkas is, is, is coordinating with the drug cartels and China. And it's not just Mayorkas, by the way. It's the highest levels of this government. And everyone knows this. And... The, the Democrats, they've been, the Democrat Party has been taken over by radical lunatics like you see in the squad. And they think, they think that it is perfectly acceptable to transform this country's demographics by 
overrunning us with an invasion of illegals and calling them climate refugees or people seeking political asylum. When has South America not been a third world pit run by dictators? Was there some period of time that I've missed? All right, let's take our first break of the day. My name is Brian Craig. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. Our number is toll free, 1 888 465 2631. 888 465 2631. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve Kane Show live on air now. 888 Go Kane 1. This is The Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Hey, check your phone. Someone's on your doorstep and is trying to look for a way into your home. If no one is monitoring your home, then you need to call Sloan Spanish. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome. By the way, you members out there, did you um, get access to that members-only live stream I did right before I went on the air this morning? There's a new feature that allows that, that YouTube has that allows me to do live streams to members-only on my mobile device. So... Great. So I'll do more of that. That was just a test to see if it worked. It just popped up with the latest update to the YouTube app. All right. Where is that? It's in the 50s outside today, but it's going to be in the high 70s later today. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. We'll be out of this break in just a moment. All right, 18 minutes after the hour. Call us on hold. Stand by. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. You know, the free shipping offer continues at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout. And there's just huge new specials that Mike Lindell has added. And remember, you get the special discount and free shipping with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. And free shipping is a whole another huge savings. And I just give you an example. And, and the free shipping is site-wide, all items. No matter how big, no matter how small, free shipping with our promo code Kane. But as an example, the My Pillow bathrobes, I have one, my wife has one, they are spectacular. And the My Pillow bathrobes, there you know, there's two types. There's a light lighter one and a heavier one. We have the heavier one, but but bathrobes are heavy. You know, they're just forty nine ninety eight with our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E. But free shipping, that weight doesn't matter. If it wasn't for free shipping, you'd have to pay you know, the shipping is determined by the weight, but it's free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout. And the bathrobe's just $49.98. But that's just an example. It's free shipping site-wide at MyPillow.com 
with our promo code Kane at checkout. Remember, when you do that, you're supporting the program and Mr. Mike Lindell as well. You can also order by phone, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good morning, Brian. This is Richie. Hey, Richie. I, I got some bad news for all of us. I mean, you, me, everybody. All it takes, in other words, when President Trump was impeached, remember, uh, the Democrats controlled the, the Senate and, and, the, and the Congress, House of Representatives. So they had this big show trial. They knew they couldn't convict President Trump. They didn't have enough votes. But they they make they try to muddy the waters and drag them through all that crap. My Arkansas is going to take is a simple dismissal by Schumer on a vote. Yeah. The majority. And yeah. Yeah. No. No. May, Mayorkas. Y- y- the chances of there being a trial are s- slim to none. And if there is a trial, he's going to be acquitted. May, th- this is the crazy thing. America is being run by outlaws, corrupt outlaws, and uh, this this impeachment. I mean, it, in technically, it's really just symbolic. It means nothing, and 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 when when the, either they decide there's no trial or he's acquitted, they'll take that as a victory lap. I mean, look at how these jerks are handling it now. Well, the Republicans, you know, they, there was this solution, and they wouldn't vote for the solution, legalizing illegal immigration. Yeah, Bob Alinsky, by the way, and bring that up too. They attacked him yesterday. They attack any anybody that they attack the prosecutor that that uh, exposed Biden. Anybody that exposes these people, they blatantly that you you could watch. I watch all the time. I sit there. I I'm in disbelief. They spend the whole time attacking witnesses against against these creeps. I mean, it, it, it's it's such a corrupt government right now. It's see, see, Bob, with Bob, Bob Alinsky, I watched those interviews that Tucker did, and there wasn't a lot in those interviews, but what Bob Alinsky does is give them names and companies and such that they research, and they found out all kinds of dirt about Joe Biden through Bob Alinsky. But, you know, here, here's the thing. This thing with Mayorkas is, is, is not really, I, I mean, technically it's just symbolic, but it isn't, because Trump's going to come back, okay? And I'm, I'm telling you that, p- that this country, when I say this country is being run by outlaws, that's just not a figure of speech. That is, those are very accurate words that I and others use when we describe this. People like Mayorkas, like Fannie Willis, very well will find themselves in jail. The crimes that are being committed are beyond imagination. And this guy, Mayorkas, is out of out of anyone who's ever been a member of any presidential ca- uh, cabinet there's there's no way there's been someone that's been as corrupt and as evil as this guy i mean i just saw here we are february 14th right so we're a month and 14 days or 15 days into the new year already 20,000 chinese have been apprehended at the border chinese i was going to say something to you about this okay when, when President Trump was, was president, they let the virus come into the world, but it totally disrupted his presidency. Correct. With, with the virus, okay? What do you think is going to happen? Now? This is a mm-hmm. human virus over the border. This country is not going to, when President Trump raises his hand, this country will not be recognizable. We got one more, we got nine, the amount of people that come in here, it's, it's incredible. And the cities, I mean, you're not going to be able to... This, this, let me, let me, let me tell you, and, and I, I don't, I, I believe this is probably the largest land invasion in history, perhaps. I mean, we've had, we're averaging by the government statistics, which you know are very conservative numbers, 4.6 million a year illegals with Biden. That's what the home. That's what Mayorkas's office tells us. Four point six million a year. So you know, you multiply that times three. That's twelve, thirteen, like fifteen million. Uh, you know, th- 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 when has there been an invasion this large? It's not just an invasion. This is they're already committing crimes, like you said earlier. They're not only police officers. They're, they're, they're attacking people all over these major. They're starting to expose it now, but it's going to be a lot worse in nine months. 
And, and, I mean, we're looking at we're looking at almost eleven months before President Trump raises his hand. Well, they're gonna the 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 closer it gets to Trump's return, and when Trump's re return becomes more certain, uh, you know, for everyone, the numbers are going to increase significantly because they're on a time clock that's and they're going to run out of time. You watch movies quite a bit now. You you see those movies where cities are so unsafe you can't go outside because people are just shooting, killing, killing each other all over the place. It's going to be some mess, man. I mean, I don't know how any anybody can... If anybody can straighten it out, it could be him, but I think it's going to be unrecognizable. The United States, I mean, these people are... To these people are traitors to this country. It's, it's, and like I said, it's a human virus worse worse than COVID. This oh, yeah. COVID. Oh, yeah. It's a violence that's going to be in the streets and it's... Well, wait until wait and wait wait until the deportations begin, and and the deportations will happen. Uh, there's going to be a mass resistance to that. Let me tell you something. You're, you know my wife's Venezuela. People don't realize that Venezuela, and that's what's going to come to this country. It's a lot of these, a lot of these cities they don't they're not allowed to have guns. You know, so these hotels are boarding up with with coat racks and boxes every night because the, the streets are unsafe. The streets are going to be unsafe all over this country. There's not enough police officers. They're, they're, they're already not hiring police officers because they're financially they're broke because of all these invaders. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a snowball, man. I mean, this is this is a lot worse than people realize. It, it, it's going to get a lot worse, too, and, and I don't know. It, this country's going to be done. Yeah. All right, I'll give you. The, I, I got. I got to run, Richie. But thank you for your call. And I'll tell you that you know there was a um, the job numbers. I've got an article on this. I saw in Breitbart. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, let me pull this up because this this was um, unbelievable. So they they came out with the jobs numbers, right? And they're bragging about the jobs numbers. Did you see Breitbart had a great story on this? And uh, let me see if I can pull this up. Or am I going to have to pull it up after the break? By the way, our number is toll free. One triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. But they propped up the uh, job numbers with the illegals, giving jobs to illegals. They're counting the illegals as new jobs that they they have jobs, right? The illegals have gotten jobs. They're not even supposed to be here. They're not even legally here, but they're counting the. That's how they propped up the jobs numbers. And I know I um when I leave my house in the morning. I'm one of the first people in the neighborhood that leaves. There's a few other people in my neighborhood that leave as early as I do. But most everyone's home. And, you know, I live in a family neighborhood. And count, maybe you guys, if you're up early enough, count how many cars are in front of the houses in your neighborhood. It is not unusual to have five or six cars in front of three and four bedroom houses. I mean, so wh why is that? It's because the adult kids are moving back home with their kids, right? Yes, here I hear the article. Listen to this. Joe Biden's job record, this is in Breitbart, is built on the record of hiring 2.9 million illegals. That's how they propped up the, the jobs numbers. They hired just under 3 million illegals, and they say, look, all these jobs. I don't know what they hired them to do. Did they really hire them or is it just giving them that monthly check and they're counting that as a job? I don't know, but that's how they propped up the jobs numbers. And you know what? They know it. They think we're stupid. Well, I don't know. They're in charge and we're not and Mayorkas is getting away with this. You know, so, you know, what, you know, what are you going to do? All right, listen, we'll take our break for the bottom of the hour. Come back with much more and your calls after this.
Oh man, I tell you, this is just, um, it's insane. Yeah, no, Richie's never happy, that's for sure. He's always miserable, but you know, he's what you call a curmudgeon. We'll be back shortly, guys. Celebrating 47 years on the air. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show. I want to play this audio I played on my podcast last night. You know, my podcast, The Brian Craig Show Podcast, which is a separate show I do. It's you know, one of a couple separate shows I do. You know, hey, It's Biden's America. You got to have three, four things going on just to get by. Um, 
My podcast, by the way, is on all podcast platforms. If you'd like to check it out, and I've been doing that show with my wife for over a decade, and the Brian Craig Show podcast has been named the number three must-listen-to conservative podcast in America. Number one was Mark Levin, number two, Glenn Beck, and then three, the Brian Craig Show podcast. Multiple years running, by the way, named that. So, um, yeah, the podcast is very widely listened to. And I talk about things th- that, and, and play audio sound bites and such and discuss that I don't play here, right? It's, it's, not ver- it's very uncommon for me to play the same audio, as audio sound bite I play on the radio, on the podcast, or an audio sound bite I play on the podcast, on the radio, because I you know, try to keep them separate and do different things in different places. But every once in a while, there's something so big that I have to share it uh, on both to get your feedback. And um, I'm going to do that right now. If you're on hold, hang in there. Um, I've been telling you that what's going on at the southern border, what, what Biden and Obama and Mayorkas and all these jerks are doing, is a modern day slave passage. Just like the one that brought African slaves here uh, on slave ships from Africa, it's a modern slave passage. Most of it's labor slavery. Some of it's sex trafficking, human trafficking. But a lot of it is labor. I mean, look at the, you know, I had that story from Breitbart. Almost three million new jobs created with illegals. How much do you think they're making? Exactly. And... I came across a story from the local news out of Boston. And they did a, and what, what's happening in a lot of these liberal cities, liberal do-gooders, white liberal do-gooders, can go onto a website and host illegals in their home. And I saw one couple that did this over the week. I've seen several stories on this, but none so obvious as the one I'm going to share with you now. And when I, and I, and I want to hear your thoughts on this in particular, our African-American listeners, our callers of color. I I really want to hear your thoughts on this because you're obsessed with slavery that happened before you were born. I'm here to tell you it's going on now, but I saw this one married couple over the weekend. They went on the website and offered their home to be a host home for illegals, within 10 minutes of filling out the online form, the phone rang and they were bringing illegals to their house for them to uh, bring into their home, like foster children. But this one is insane. Now, the two, there's a, a white liberal woman in Boston. She lives alone. Well, she did live alone. And she signed up for a host family. It is, uh, it's three people, a man, a woman, and a child. They claim to be a family, husband and wife, and their child. I, I don't know. They're undocumented. They're whoever they say they are. They're black. And they're Haitian. Now, in the interview, they speak Spanish. So these are, you know, so there, you know, there are a lot of black Hispanic people. You know, in Cuba, for example, Blacks are the majority in Cuba. A lot of people don't know that. So I don't know if they're really Haitian. They say they're Haitian, okay? But they speak Spanish, and it seems fluent from what I can tell. You know, my wife speaks Spanish, and um, she said their Spanish was pretty good, but, you know, she's not a native speaker. But anyway, this white liberal woman in Boston opened up her home to be a host family to illegals. So she's got uh, a husband, wife, and child in her home, and they've become her house slaves. Now, they don't say that in the story. You know, this is Boston, NBC News affiliate in Boston. So they're woke, and they don't understand. And the woman's a liberal do-gooder. She doesn't understand, but she, is, she now has house slaves. And I'm going to play the local news story, and you'll hear this. And, and I think you'll agree with me. This is crazy. So this is NBC 10 out of Boston interviewing a liberal white woman and her house slaves. Story you'll only see here at NBC 10 Boston. A migrant family from Haiti is sharing their experience. They're searching for shelter in the Boston area and then recently found a host home in Brookline. And now they're looking for jobs. As NBC 10's Aaron Logan reports, they say these last few weeks have been life-changing. 
And it it's been an emotional few weeks for Wildande Joseph and her husband. First, sleeping on the floor at Logan Airport, then in Children's Hospital with their two-year-old daughter who got very sick. Isn't that interesting? They took their daughter to the hospital for free, U.S. health care. Now, now, as it comes up here, they speak Spanish in the interview, and things are translated. But why are these Haitians so fluent in Spanish? I don't know if they're really Haitian or if they're just saying they're Haitian. You know, Haitians get a special status because of the earthquake, and it's an anarchy down there, all right? They don't have a functioning government. It's been life-changing. And it's been an emotional few weeks for Wildande Joseph and her husband. First, sleeping on the floor at Logan Airport, then in Children's Hospital with their two-year-old daughter who got very sick. <laughs> she felt bad as any mother would. Now things are looking much brighter as they've been welcomed into Lisa Hillenbrand's Brookline apartment. Tu niña es muy alegre ahora. She says her daughter is very happy. When she wakes up in the morning, she says, hi, Lisa, and everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight. And it's really fun having them. What I realized is... See, this is... Uh, the, 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 then they're going to interview the white slaveholder woman. You know what this reminds me of? There's a, there's a, a, a mockumentary on if the uh, South had won the war. You ever see this? And it's like, what would it be like if the Confederates won the war and they still have slaves? You know, that's kind of what this is like. She says her daughter is very happy. When she wakes up in the morning, she says, hi, Lisa, and everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight. And it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Wildande loves cooking. Wow. So, see, she's got her house slaves. She's got her own personal chef now with this, and the woman's black. Claims to be from Haiti, but speak in Spanish. You native speakers, does her Spanish sound fluent, or does, are you hearing like a Haitian accent with her Spanish? I'm suspect of this. So this white liberal woman in Boston has her house slaves cooking for her, cleaning for her, and it's so wonderful. They're so great. And everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight. And it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Wildande loves cooking. They lose them. La ocupación. In fact, her goal is to open up her own restaurant. The couple has their work permits and they've been taking English classes. I mean, does this guy sound Haitian to you? And and again, you those of you that are native Spanish speakers, are you hearing a Haitian accent with this guy's Spanish? They're open to work anywhere to save money for their future. In the meantime, they're enjoying their time with Lisa, their new friend for life, and their daughter's new grandmother. They are hardworking. They want to learn. They want to be successful. And I feel great helping, and I get to understand the refugee crisis from the inside. Lisa says she's so impressed by the number of people she's met right here at Brookline Town Hall meetings who've been stepping up and hosting families she's hopeful more will do the same in the coming days and weeks okay yeah she's telling all her friends get your own house slaves too and and i and i don't think what i'm saying is an exaggeration here okay this is indentured servitude and if you go back to when you know this woman by the way this slave owner this slaveholder in boston she's obviously a democrat right if you go back to the Democrats that owned African slaves in the South prior to the Civil War, and you go back to their writings and things, they talk like this woman in Brookline. Slave owners, I know this sounds crazy, but slave owners thought they were helping the slaves. They did, and they talked very similar to this. Am I being too hard? On, am I too judgmental on this? Am I being too judgy? I don't think so. 
This woman's out of her mind. And, you know, they're so woke at this news, this local news station in Boston, they don't even see what it is that they're doing. Slavery, indentured servitude, human trafficking. And, and to do a story encouraging people to bring illegals into their home is insanely dangerous. I'd like to revisit this home in a month or two months and find out if this liberal do-gooder is dead or alive. And if she is, find out how it went. What, what, what would happen if this liberal do-gooder all of a sudden decides she wants them out? Think they're just going to leave? Will they have squatter's rights? Will they steal from her? I don't know. You know, and when I hear an entire family saying they're Haitian, speaking Spanish like that, and the, pre the, the, the reporter doesn't say, well, wait a minute, you're not speaking Creole, you're not speaking French, you're speaking Spanish. What's this about? They don't even bother to get into it, do they? All right, if you're on hold, stand by. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this at one 465 2631. 888-465-2631. My name is Brian Craig. We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here on The Steve K Show. Hi, it's Steve. This is your number for you. Your choices for good morning have never been more diversified. Stay with us to our sales coach to guide you down the right path. Please. The right for you. For your design style, practicality, and always see very best value for all your hard earned dollars. Contact Luxury Vinyl Plates and Vinyls. Check out all of those boxes. We get the original 100% water. Get your new excellent flooring. Make sure you stay with your scotch resistant. Reclaimed tile visuals of travertine, stone, wine French oak, traditional hickory, and the Florida favorite, sun wash colors. There's a special look that fits your personal style for your entire home or office. The newest innovation is soft strap and padded underlay that's made from 100% recycled material to support warmth and comfort underfoot and superior sound reduction. So for the perfect balance of style, softness, and simplicity, it's always Cortex. So visit the Go For You in Jupiter at the corner of Indian Town Road and Altrin and Avon Hayes next door to Publix and Stewart on Federal Highway at the Grocery, just south of Walmart, and Go For the letter U, FLA.com. Go For You, Ford, Polk for over 40 years. Are you exhausted after work with no energy left in the tank to give your family? Are you having yes, a midday crash on a daily but basis with mental and perimenopause symptoms like hot flashes, anxiety, and depression making your daily life go far more difficult than it should? Men, do you feel like you're aging far beyond what you should? Is your sexual life and relationship suffering because of disappointments in the bedroom? Then take action and let our medical <clears throat> team at Lighthouse Medical Center help you stop the symptoms that are holding you back. We use all <clears throat> twitching have all but disappeared say goodbye to your neuropathy symptoms call lighthouse medical center for a free consultation 754-222-6642 tell them steve kane sent you we take on the social justice warriors for breakfast now the steve kane show is on all right Call us on hold, stand by. You know, uh, have you guys called Sloman's, got your doorbell camera? Yet? That's amazing. You know, my, my wife uh, had a new phone coming, new iPhone coming. And the guy, I mean, the UPS was just taking forever. They finally came. It was well after dark. My wife and I were uh, getting ready to go to bed. I'm in bed. 
And uh, boom, we get the notification. Someone's at the door. I look, and even though it's dark out, I forgot to put the front porch light on. I could see on the doorbell camera it was the UPS guy. So I went out there, got the... It's such a convenient... It, obviously, there's the security aspect, but it's such a convenience, too, for things just like that. And you know, when I'm on our cruise... Um, I can see what's going on in my house over the doorbell camera no matter where we are. Out on the seas, out in the Caribbean Sea, out in these uh, great countries we visit. And I check, re and I even get notifications, by the way, uh, anytime there's movement at my door, no matter where I am in the world. I, I often check while I'm, here on the, uh, while I'm here on the air. But they've got this incredible offer at Slomans, and you want to take advantage of it. So get something to write down the number. I'm going to give it to you in just a moment. But Slomans is giving you a $1,500 valued free home security system with professional installation when you use their low-cost central station monitoring. All right. Now, this is a limited time offer for this total home security package. You get an LED touchscreen pad, a motion detector. That's how I, that's how I know when people are coming. 10 entry points, a lifetime service plan, professional installation, and a backup battery. And you get a free doorbell camera with the installation of your Sloman Shield. Here's the number, 1-833-283-5050. 1-833-283-5050. Again, that's 1-833-283-5050. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Fred Lauderdale. Hey, what's up? Oh, well, wow. I'm listening to uh, this whole situation with these uh, immigrants staying at a person's house in Boston. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to give my, uh, my cell phone on it. All right, you're on the air, so go ahead. Well, I think that it's a wonderful thing that here in the United States, uh, people are opening up their doors. It happens to be that in other countries as well, uh, other people open up their doors to migrants. Yeah. A lot from places that are needed. And the first thing that happens is these attacks on a person trying to do some sort of good and, and turning it around into some back in the history slave ownership thing, which I don't think is actually feasible. Well, by the way, where, where, where are you from originally? South America. I think I heard the accent. I, I heard a slight accent. That's why I asked. Where in South, where in South America? In Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. So how many illegals are staying at your home? In Argentina? No, 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 no. And, and you're, you're calling me. You're, you're, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about Argentina. You say you're calling me from where? Fort Lauderdale? Where, where? Okay. In your home in Fort Lauderdale, how many illegals are staying with you? Well, I actually stay with a lot of illegals. You stay with... I, I, yeah, I teach, I teach Haitians English, so I have a huge community of... No, no, no. You have illegals living in your home? No. I'm oh, no, you live alone. Why not? Why don't you have illegals living in your home? Well, the economy doesn't fit for myself as a young man to take care of a family just like this woman is able to. Eh. Listen, when someone, when, when, so, you don't have to, own, you don't, excuse me, you don't have to own the house to open up your doors. Um, well, why not? No, no, no. Hold on. You don't have to own your home to move other people in, okay? Now, here's the thing. These, this, this family here, they say they're from Haiti. How do you know? Because you're, you're, you're not smart enough to have lived here in Florida all this time and not pick up an Haitian accent. Yep. They're speaking Spanish. Hold on. They're speaking Spanish. You know, we have a wonderful Haitian community here in Florida. Oh, man. That jerk chicken's the best, okay? We should have a jerk chicken sponsor on the radio station. B but uh, in all my time, of, excuse me, ex excuse me, ex excuse me, excuse me, I'm speaking. I'm speaking, I am speaking, I'm speaking. Excuse me. Por favor, allow me to speak, all right? Listen, I have, excuse me, excuse me. I have lived in Florida almost my entire life, okay? Oh, yeah. I, pro I probably have lived here longer than you. I've lived in Florida since 1981, okay? Since I was a little kid. I was 10, 10 year, 11 years old when I moved to Florida. I've been coming to Florida since 1976. I have known Haitians my entire life. I have encountered Haitians. Every you go to the story. I, excuse me. I have never encountered a Haitian speaking Spanish. 
Sometimes they'll speak French. Sometimes they speak Creole. Most of the time they speak English. I don't see them speaking the Spanish like this, the entire family. Something stinks about this story. They said, they didn't say they're Dominican. Dominicans say they're Dominican. They said they're Haitian. Same island. What do you think is going to happen? We're on the same continent as Mexico. What does that mean? They said they're Haitian, not Dominican. Dominicans and Haitians are two different things. Your wife speaks any kind of credible Spanish. Let me tell you. Because you obviously don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I do. But see, unlike you, I have an American perspective, not an Argentinian perspective on the issue. New Yorker. I was born in Argentina. I was raised my entire life in New York. So now this changes everything, does it? No, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't change anything. That makes it worse. You know, the state of Florida has uh, one of the biggest problems Florida has had uh, are New Yorkers who come down here like you with uh, your liberal ideas. Don't turn Florida into New York. I, I, I'm not trying to turn New York. It's impossible to turn Fort Lauderdale into the beautiful city that New York is. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah, where the police are getting attacked by illegals. Here's the thing with this, okay? For it, it, let me ask you this. As a man, as a man, if you got to, excuse me, if you got if you got a call from your mother, oh, uh, I know everything about it. Slow down. If you're, if you're, mu- yes. About a woman, you don't know what she's paying, what, what these people are working for. Okay. If, if your mother, excuse me, if your mother, if your mother lived alone in New York, okay, and she called you, if your mother lived alone in New York and called you here in Fort Lauderdale and said, I've just moved in uh, a man and a woman who say they're married and their child into my home, they're here, uh, they're illegal immigrants, what would you tell mom? Well, I wouldn't be like you and be like, I didn't ask you what you would be if you'd be like me. What would you say to your mom? What would you say to mom? Congratulations, mom. You're doing a great thing. You know why? What? What? It would take in homeless people. Yeah, well, the Argentina used to take in Nazis after the war, so I really don't want to f- take in the people that Argentina takes in. Let me tell you, if my mom and my mom lives in Fort Lauderdale, if my mom called up. Yeah, they did take in Nazis. Yeah, the Nazis fled to Argentina. Okay, yes, they did. If my mother, if 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 my mother called me, okay, and said, everybody knows they took in Nazis. If 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 Argentina is so good, why are you here? No, I know. Why'd your family leave? Okay, if my mother called me from Fort Lauderdale and said, I've just moved in, a man and a woman and a child, they're illegals and they're living with me alone, I would get, uh, first thing I would do is I would grab my, uh, I'd gla- grab my Glock 48, get in the car, and then, and I'd go, and I'd go to my mom's house and say, Mom, they gotta go. They gotta go. And I'd call the police and I'd have them removed. That's disgusting the way you think. And to think that people who... It's not safe. That they pose a threat. No, 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 no. They're illegal immigrants. Yes. And their language, their language that they're speaking does not match the country that they say they're from. Cross a border. Illegally. Human beings, this is on earth. You don't own the United States. You crossing into New York should be illegal. Because you shouldn't be able to go up to New York and speak to people like this. Uh Uh-huh. So, so you, you, you've, you've obviously left your house for work. Did you lock, excuse me, did you lock your front door or did you leave it open? Is your door unlocked? Nice people, you have many nice people, Latinos, Hondurans, El Salvadorans, what? Yeah, hear, hear, hear the accent again? Yeah. To work, you can hear the accent and stretch it as far as you can and make it whatever you want to make it. But for you to stand there and just highlight the people in need, and it's not our problem. Just like Ukraine's not our problem. That's your problem is she opened her doors. Now, guess what? There's somebody in your town, in your sector. Their their daughter, their two-year-old daughter, went to the hospital. How much money did that cost? How much money did that cost? They don't have insurance. We paid for that. You paid for it? Yeah, taxpayers. 
The taxpayers paid for their two-year-old daughter's hospital care. Taxpayer, listen. Well, I, I worry about taxes because I pay them, which you obviously don't, or you would be concerned too. Yeah, which means you get paid to say whatever is of your best interest. Tomorrow, Tech 9 or Glock can come in and pay you, and you're going to be spitting and spewing. Yeah, go get a vest, go get some bullets. What are you... No. Of course you are. No. You get some money, and then says, I'll say this on the air. That's who you are. Yeah, I do commercials. Yes, that's what I do for a living. Hey, listen, thank you for the call. we got to take our break for the top of the hour. Call us on hold. We'll be right back. WWNN Palmetto Beach. WIR. Exactly. 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 Everybody knows that Argentina took in the Nazis after the war. Give me a break. Exactly. Exactly. They've been searching. They've been searching for Hitler in Argentina. But it's, you know. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. But he doesn't bring any in his house, these good people. What kind of guy would want their mother to move in a family of illegals? No, he's got an accent. Oh, there's no way I I would let people move into my house like that. I mean, golly. <clears throat> there should just be a little investigation to find out if they're really Haitian. Speaking Spanish like that, the whole family. <clears throat> I mean, would you want your um, your own family to move in with their husband and kid? And how long would you put up with that?
All right, callers on hold standby. Hour number two has begun. Great caller, the uh, Argentinian, all right, who says that Argentina did not take in the Nazis after the war. Are you kidding me? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, what's up? Hey, so I got to say, I wish I could give you that big high five with your last caller. I mean, the hypocrisy is incredible. Um, you know, on the humanitarian level, it's unfortunate with, the, with what's going on, and everybody likes to give them a lending hand. I mean, I've given the guy a corner, a bottle of water, maybe a, uh, a, a you know, cake bar. Hell, I might even give you a ride to the next uh, exit on the highway, but no way in hell would I be allowing this family to my house, especially not knowing what what's to come, what's the end game here, you know, what, what kind of vetting process mm -hmm. are letting these people into their house. Um, how, how do you put your head on the pillow and go to bed at night not knowing what and how this guy potentially could do should things go south? In this you know, if I, were, if I were the reporter with those Haitians in that lady's house that are speaking Spanish, the whole family, I would ask them why, the, why they're speaking Spanish, not Creole or French. I would ask them who um, uh, the president of Haiti is, if they have one. I'd ask them the colors and what they, you know, what's the capital What's, you know, that I, I, I question whether they're from Haiti, okay? I'm sorry. No, and, you know, you're 100% right. And like your previous uh, caller there, okay, great. So Haiti um, shares a lot with the Dominican Republic, you know. We all know that, great. Uh, you know, and if anything, if anything, so maybe they know a little bit of Spanish because maybe they're, they live close to the border of the proxy. Uh, obviously a Haitian person. Listen, okay, you speak Spanish. Go ahead. I speak. Spanish. I'm listening to that guy and that woman, and their Spanish is pretty on point. Yeah. And I didn't pick up anything that was. Uh, did you Did you hear a Haitian accent in their Spanish? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't pick up anything on that. Obviously, a Haitian. Obviously, a Haitian person can learn Spanish, but like my wife, my wife speaks some Spanish. Okay. But we both don't. For a husband and a wife to both say they're from Haiti, both speak what sounds fluent Spanish to me. Um, is highly unusual. I've known Haitians and Dominicans. Dominicans call themselves Dominicans, and Haitians call themselves Haitians. And, um, you know, there's something fishy about this. There's no vetting. Correct. Uh, you know, so I just, you know, where is it going to go? What's their end game here? You know, is it a six-month deal? If things don't go uh, to their... And do you, do you believe, you know, that? do you believe that guy, if his mother in New York called and said she moved in a family of illegals that he'd say, congratulations, mom, give me a break. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Listen, I'm from New York, too. And, he, you know, if New, York, if New York was all that great, I would have never left, okay? That's right. I hope you're still listening. I hope you're still listening because you know it, because otherwise you'd be back there, too. That's right. What part about New York City right now is when you're flying over it at 30,000 feet at night and you're in a line because you can't see it. So, <laughs> New York. That's right. All right. Thank you very much for calling. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Good call. Good calls today so far. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Cassandra. Oh, hey, Doug. And, yeah, and yeah, anyway, I tested for Biden, too. It was a tough call. But uh, you handled it great. But I can't believe people are that, uh, that weird that they would. Well, uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you about the, about the call. And th see, this is part of the problem. I, I mentioned this to him, but it might have gotten lost in the argument. He, uh, I mean, I knew as soon as he called, I heard an accent, okay? And that, that explains his entire position. See, that guy, he met, he born in Argentina and grew up in New York, he said. But, but he's not an American in his mindset. He may be an American citizen. I didn't bother to ask. But, but that doesn't mean that he's an American in his mind and in his heart. He doesn't think like an American. He's not been Americanized. He's still Argentinian. And, and that whole discussion shows you the problem with this, this um, replacement theory. They're bringing people here. They're not Americanizing them. And he's like, in Argentina, we, they, you know, we don't want to turn this country into Argentina. It's a, third, it's a third world corrupt pit. That's why they elected this new guy down there who's tr trying to fix things. Yeah, well... <laughs> This guy was obviously has some strange thinking. I don't care anybody he thinks you should bring in illegals into into your household. Yeah. And whatever you want to do, I guess they would do what they want to do. 
you know, uh, the, the, the thing about Mayorkas, you know, uh, if they if they get him out of the office, Biden is time to put somebody else just as bad, if not worse, you know. So if this is going to be going on until the election. To fuck- listen, listen, Mayorkas, Mayorkas isn't going anywhere. But at, le- but at least it gets a dialogue going about the problems that he's, that he's over- overseeing to help Trump win re-election. Oh, yeah. But this is great. I think this is going to bring out a lot of people to vote because when you, know, when you see what's really going on, and people uh, that uh, listen to CNN and then MSNBC don't hear anything, mm-hmm. so they hear this, they'll say, oh, man, yeah, we've we got to vote for Republican, get these mm-hmm. And get some good guys, hopefully. Anyway. All right, Doug. Yep. If, 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 you, if I could, I saw your video on, on the, uh, the Beyond oh, Man. I've been on some ships and nothing like that one. Man, that is the coolest ship. And your room was spectacular. You know, that, that is a high roller room for sure. Yeah, we, uh, we took a tour of our cruise ship, the Celebrity Beyond. Friday morning, I went right from the radio station to the ship. And uh, executives from the ship gave us a tour. And, and so, and what we, the reason we do that is we scout out all the locations for our events and to make sure they're they're like uh, two events, we've changed to different rooms because of that too. But if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see the tour and we actually visited the cabin that I'm going to be staying in and you'll get to see it in the, uh, in the video. You know, I, 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 I tell you, I do trade shows when I'm in Vegas, they put me in these gigantic ones as well, but I think your one was better. You know, I love that uh, contemporary. Wait, you know, you know the the thing is, people they when they think of cruise ships, they they think of like Carnival Cruise Line in Norwegian with ten thousand kids on board. Our our cruise ships, our crew, we go on Celebrity Cruise Line. It's like a private yacht. It's a luxury experience, and and it's and by the way, it's a luxury experience for less money than like on that Icon of the Seas and all that. And it's uh, it's an upscale. These other these other cruise lines, I are like taking the bus. We're on a yacht. Oh, that's for sure. You know, like I always say, that, that, that room you're in, you don't need it. It's not, it's not, nothing wrong with having it, man. It's a nice cabin. You're going to have a great time, with you. Yeah. Yeah, all right, take care, take care. In fact, I told people in the, if you see in the video, I forgot to edit this part out, but it's up there. I said, don't tell Steve about this cabin. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Renee from Harlem. Oh, hey, Renee. You expose yourself. Every time you open your stupid mouth. You know they're on the same island as Dominican Republic, so of course they speak Spanish. And- excuse me, excuse me. We're on the same continent as Mexico. Uh, where I'm right up the street from Miami. That doesn't mean I speak uh, Spanish. Do you, do you, you speak English, man? You're so ignorant. What what other language? What other languages do you speak other than English? Other than English, what other languages do you speak? I speak Spanish as well. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I'm not going to entertain your ignorance. You don't even know what I would say. Stop on. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah, and he was a communist. So? And the other... That was, that was some of the worst Spanish. Say my name is Renee from Harlem in Spanish. No. Why? You speak Spanish. (laughs) Uh huh. But but you speak Spanish. And you're gonna call them slaveholders because she's opening her home. She has them doing work. They're house slaves. She has them doing work. They're not doing anything against their will, stupid. Really? They're they they're in a country where they don't speak the language. They're here illegally. They have no family or contacts here. Where are they gonna go? That's how human traffickers operate. You are here illegally. Go back to Europe. You're here illegally. No, I was. I, I'm Native American. Here. I'm a Native American. No, you're not. I was born. I was. European. I was born in America. You're an inferior, weak, scared European. Tell, tell me that in Spanish. No. I thought you said you spoke Spanish. I'm not going to entertain your stupid sensibility. You don't speak Spanish anyway. You no. No, in fact, I almost didn't graduate college. Uh, I was afraid. I, I was going to change my major because you, ha- you have to have two semesters of a foreign language. I took and dropped every language you can imagine. I barely got through. My wife's tutoring got me through. 
And uh, thankfully, the final exam was not comprehensive. It was just a weekly quiz or I would have been done. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's take one more call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? By the way, anyone believe that Renee speaks Spanish? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once. Yes, you're on the air. You're, Thank you. Yeah, what's your name? Where are you calling from? You're on the air. I'm sorry. I'm, this, this, is, this is Diana from Springfield, Ohio. Hey, Diana. Hey, good to, good to talk with you, Brian, because I'm going to inform some of your listeners about where some of these patients are actually coming from and why they speak Spanish. So don't forget that in 2010, um, with, the, with the hurricane and the um, uh, earthquake, Brazil invited and gave open visas to Haitians. In, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese, not Spanish. So, so a lot of them went to Chile. So a lot of your Haitians are coming up through... Listen. Listen, this, this is not, I, Ohio's my home state. I'm from Columbus. I know Springfield well. You, you don't have Haitians in Ohio, okay, like we do. In Florida, we have a very large Haitian population. And by the way, some of the best food is Haitian food. If you have not had jerked food, you are missing out, okay? Some of the best. And I, I've known Haitians my entire life. I've never known a Haitian that speaks anything, but they speak three languages, English, Creole, and French. I've never seen, the, and, and Dominican Republic's on the same island, but it's another country. And by the way, it's not third world. The, the Dominican Republic is first world. In fact, we might, I, I was thinking we should take a cruise there sometime. So, no, no, no. What The point is, obviously a Haitian can learn Spanish, but there's no vetting going on. You should not just accept that they're Haitian. Haitians have a special refugee status because it's an anarchy and the earthquake and such. When you have an entire family of people that are, there's, people don't understand this. There's a lot of black people in Latin America. The majority population in Cuba is black, not Hispanic, black. Okay, people don't know that. So when you have an entire family speaking Spanish but saying they're from Haiti, you got to check that out a little bit. There's no vetting going on, and, and that's all I'm saying. Look, You're absolutely right. You're exactly right, Brian. And getting back to, to, to our situation in Haiti, we've got, we've got 7,000 of them. We've got 7,000 Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. It's an absolute crap show. Okay. All right. I, I, got, I got to run, but thank you for the call. All right. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Let me tell you, do you, does anyone believe that Renee speaks Spanish? I couldn't get him to say anything. <laughs> exactly. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Everyone, please like the video.
I heard that, and it was, and it, he barely got the word out. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, call us on hold. Stand by. I'm Brian. This is Steve Kane Show. Are you in pain? Well, that means you haven't gone to see Dr. Philip Appleton, my chiropractor, because you don't have to be in pain. His laser away pain treatment works on pretty much every type of pain I know of, and uh, many I've not even heard. And I just go through some of them. This is not a complete list, but uh, Dr. Appleton's laser away pain treatment works on stenosis, neck pain, tennis elbow, tinnitus, strains and sprains, sciatica, muscular contraction, lumbar pain, hip pain, knee pain, bursitis, arthritis bronchial, neuralgia, so many other types of pain. And the laser wave pain treatment, there are no drugs, no injections, no downtime, and it is 100% painless, completely painless. Oh yeah, and it works, which is the most important. You know, the laser wave pain treatment, what it does, it actually repairs the damage that's causing the pain. That's why the five times that Dr. Appleton has rid me of pain with his laser away pain treatment that it has not returned because the laser away pain treatment has repaired the damage in my shoulder, my knee, the arthritis in my finger. It's been repaired. And that's why it has not returned. My knee, he treated my knee like two years ago. Two treatments, pain gone after years of suffering, and it has not returned. Give him a call. Appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome, even on Saturdays, 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. And online, AppletonCairo.com. Call Dr. Appleton and say bye-bye to your pain. All right, back to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, Brian. Mary Jane from Dania Beach. Hey, what's up, Mary Jane and Dania? What's up? Brian, you know, I have a little information about Haitian. My ex is, was a Haitian or is a Haitian. And, yes, I, I see uh, Spanish-speaking. I hear it. And I hear their accent is not a love. That's not their first language. But, but what they do, Haitian people, they have to go to Dominican Republic to work because there's no working. Now, hold, hold, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. I, I got to get control. This discussion is not, can Haitian people learn Spanish? That's a stupid discussion. The, the, the discussion, is, I'm going to have to play the, the clip again. Um, but there's no vetting going on. When you have a Haitian family speaking Spanish and not Creole or French, you got to vet them, okay? Obviously, people can learn foreign languages. It, it, that's, I mean, so obviously Haitians can, but there should be some vetting. It's unusual. It is, it's not as common as you want to think, just because your husband spoke Spanish. Uh, it's not, it, it is, this is uncommon. An entire family? Well, you know, I don't know about that particular family, but it's, they don't want to go to Dominican Republic. They don't want to work there, but they're, you know, so they have to. Okay. All right. All right. Enough, enough, enough. I mean, this, I got, let me get control of the discussion here. Yes. Haitian people can learn foreign languages. I can't. I try, I took, in college, I took Spanish many times, French, German, and all these many times. Oh, I didn't get any, I didn't fail any of them, of them because I dropped before that 
time. Let me replay. I got to get control of the discussion here because it's getting lost. Um, if you're on hold, bear with me. Uh, let me play this clip again. This um, is a local news story. I played this about a uh, little less than an hour ago, but let me reset it up. This is a local news story out of Boston. And what's happening in these liberal cities is um, they're asking people to take in illegals into their homes, okay? And this NBC affiliate in um, Boston did a story on this single liberal white Democrat lady who took in a man and a woman and a child who claimed their husband and wife and this is their child from Haiti. And she loves them so much because they're doing all this housework for her. And basically what has happened is she has turned these people into her house slaves. They say they're from Haiti. They're speaking Spanish. Okay. And let me play the story again so we can get some context of what the, uh, of, of what the discussion, the discussion is not, can people learn a foreign language? I mean, that's a stupid discussion. Maybe Joyce can get some calls today by bringing that up because she speaks Spanish and I know that she's still on She's desperate for calls. Okay, here we go. Let's, let me play. This is um, NBC Channel 10 affiliate out of Boston interviewing a single liberal woman who's brought in uh, illegal slaves into her home. Story you only see here in NBC 10 Boston. A migrant family from Haiti is sharing their experience. They're searching for shelter in the Boston area and then recently found a host home in Brookline. And now they're looking for jobs. As NBC 10's Aaron Logan reports, they say these last few weeks have been life changing. And it's been an emotional few weeks for Waldande Joseph and her husband. First, sleeping on the floor at Logan Airport, then in Children's Hospital with their two-year-old daughter who got very sick. <laughs> she felt bad, as any mother would. Now things are looking much brighter as they've been welcomed into Lisa Hillenbrand's Brookline apartment. Tu niña es muy alegre ahora. Muy alegre. Cuando se levanta en la mañana, se dice, ay, Lisa. She says her daughter is very happy. When she wakes up in the morning, she says, hi, Lisa, and everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight, and it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Wildande loves cooking. In fact, her goal is to open up her own restaurant. The couple has their work permits and they've been taking English classes. They're open to work anywhere to save money for their future. In the meantime, they're enjoying their time with Lisa, their new friend for life, and their daughter's new grandmother. They are hardworking, they want to learn, they want to be successful, and I feel great helping and I get to understand the refugee crisis from the inside. Lisa says she's so impressed by the number of people she's met right here at Brookline Town Hall meetings who've been stepping up and hosting families. She's hopeful more will do the same in the coming days and weeks. Okay, so she's moved these illegals into her home. They're doing housework for her, so she basically has house slaves. And um, I, when I, I listen to that again, I am, now this, now I'm not a Spanish speaker. I can understand a little bit of Spanish, but I'm not hearing any Haitian accent with the Spanish. Okay. I'm not hearing Haitian accent in that Spanish. So if you are a Spanish speaking person, Maybe they do. Maybe they are Haitian. I don't know, but there should be some more vetting. And I also want to hear what your thoughts are about single women bringing Ill undocumented illegals into their home. Is that safe? This is indentured servitude going on here. And what happens when this liberal white lady gets tired and wants them out? Is NBC 10 Boston going to go back in six weeks and find out how it all turned out? If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again.
Oh, my goodness. That is definitely Slavery 2.0. Whoever said that, it's the, you're right. Slavery 2.0. I did park properly today. Yesterday, I parked in two spaces. Oh, my goodness. I parked normally today. If you're on hold, hang in there. We'll be back in about one minute. Hey, Mike, Mike, can you check and see who's on the last line they called in? 
All right, we are back. Call us on hold, stand by. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. All right, we've covered a lot today. I'll take another call or two before I bring up something new because there's a lot of other things to talk about. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Morning. Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, Mr. Brian. Uh, good morning. My name's Robert. Um, yes, Robert. Th thanks for taking my call. Well, I'm, I'm an immigrant in this country, but I used to be, by the way. Came to this country about 30 years ago. Now, that, those guys they interviewed, they are Asians. And I just want to make that clear because I teach, I teach Spanish, I speak Spanish, and I speak two other, other languages, but that's not the case. You, 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 hear the, you, hear the, you hear the accent. Yes, yes, I do. They are Asians. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Now, now stop, stop right there, though, okay? And I want to I point this out to you. Um, d during the course of this morning's broadcast, I have done more vetting on this family than the United States government did or this lunatic lady that invited them into their home, okay? And, and I'll tell you this about Haiti. Um, what, what would you tell, like if I, if you and I, we just, if I called you up and said, hey, I, I'm going to go to Haiti for the weekend, what would you tell me? Well, I'll say no. You'd say no. Why? Yes. Well, because, because a, uh, Haiti is going through a lot of stuff right now. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. What would happen if I walked the streets of Port-au-Prince tonight? You might, you might not make it back. I'd be dead. So, okay, I might be dead. So, do you think it makes, it, it, it's safe? For a single woman, this, this white liberal do-gooder in Boston, to bring in people from a country that if I walked the streets of, I'd be dead tonight, according to you. Oh, no, I'm, I'm totally with you. I'm, I'm totally with you. I mean, you're talking to a big church. I mean, I'm, I'm Trump. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not questioning that. I'm just, I'm illustrating to the audience how, how stupid and how dangerous it is to bring people from Haiti that you know nothing about with no vetting or background into your home, especially a man. Well, you see, they're just trying to sell that. They're just trying to sell these people. They're just trying to sell, sell it to people that they should bring people into their homes. That's what I take from that, from that uh, 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 interview. If, yes. They're trying to send it to people, okay, that they should bring strangers into their homes. But yeah, but what I want to also talk about is the, the that Argentinian guy that called in. Mm-hmm. He's, he's just trying to save his job, right? He doesn't have a job but to teach English under, you know, in his house and get paid on the, on, under the table. So he's trying to save his job. That's why. This is an English we're talking to. He's an English. He's not proud of this country, just like you said. You know, he's just here claiming he's American. Mm -hmm. he's not American. He's Argentinian, yeah. Thanks to be an American. Yes, yeah. So that's all I wanted to say. Well, listen, I appreciate your call. You've added a lot to the conversation. All right, thanks so much. Robert, all right. Okay, uh, great, great calls today. In fact, every call today has been good. Every call, including Renee's. I, I, I didn't forget about his call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, Mira. This is Michelle from Massachusetts. Hey, Michelle. What's on your mind? Uh, bear with me because I've been up for 24 hours. I've got a migraine and haven't been able to sleep. So if I, if I um, mess up or if I'm a little slow, please forgive me. You know, if you, if you have problems sleeping, have you tried listening to the Joyce Kaufman show? That, that will put you to sleep on a dime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boom. You'll fall right asleep every time. <laughs> I thought I would, I, I've been piecing all this together very quickly. Um, my son is, is very single. Um, I'm single as a single woman living alone. I, I did think of as several years ago when Obama was an officer was telling people you can take children that are coming you know, the children that were coming to the border, take them into your home. Of course Nancy Pelosi opened them with with, with, with their with open arms, but she would not take any in. Remember when she said that. Um and I, I think it well, you know, I really you know, because they would, they offered to pay you if you took them into their home if, if, into, into your home. And, uh, uh, of course, I, um, having a lot of health issues, I, di I didn't, I would love to do that, but there was, uh, would be something to have a child, you know, it would be a wonderful thing, and to give love to a child that, that is 
No, but we're not, we're not, we're not, excuse me, we're not talking about a child. We are talking about a grown, a grown man and a grown woman from a, and, and I just, and I was just talking to a legal Haitian immigrant a moment ago. He said, if I walked the streets of Haiti today, I'd be a dead man because it's so dangerous. So you want to bring in an adult man and woman from the, from a country that deadly into your home? That's exactly, and because I've been thinking for a long time that they, because of the surge at the border, that they're going to probably force people who are poor to do that, and it, it terrifies me because, yeah, people that you do not know, uh, especially when it, the first thing I made this point on my channel many years ago, mm. that. And the first thing uh, when they tell you when a criminal is on the loose, uh, you know, close the ports, uh, you know, check, they, they tell them, because they, they go to the border to get out of the country. That's right. You can't trust anybody who's just running over the border who hasn't um, identified themselves to come in legally because they could be a, a murderer on the run. You can't mm -hmm. hear who they are. But if, I listen to Howard Carr a lot, and Howard Carr lives in Florida as a good friend of Trump, and many years ago he said um, that they're, they're in, in this area, in New England, in Boston, the, the number one uh, drug dealers. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. But this, this is this this is what this uh, this is what I know. Okay, this is what I know. That this. No. Uh, by the way, thanks thanks for your call. Um, if you're on hold, stand by. This is what I know. There is a massive move being done by the government to get people to take illegals into their homes, like this lady did, and people are doing it all over the country. It is incredibly dangerous, and this is an important show today, and that's why I'm highlighting this. This is very dangerous, and it's happening all over the all over the country. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Terry from Florida. Hey, Terry. Hey, what's up, man? No. I agree with you, brother. I agree with you 100%. These people are dangerous, okay? They're very dangerous. A lot of Haitians, a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Jamaicans, they vote witchcraft, okay? That's their religion. And these people entering into your home, you don't look, they could be nice one minute, and everything will turn on you the next. You see what I'm saying? And so they cannot be trusted. And a woman like that in that situation, she's a, 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 a widow woman, or maybe she just don't have a husband, and she's alone. She's living alone. So mm. company. Yep. She opened herself like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it could turn dangerously, very dangerous. You know? Oh, uh, and, when, and when she wants them out. And, you know, I mean, when she tells that guy, you got to get out, I can't take it anymore. What's what? What's his reaction going to be? Well, and, and, and they might, and people might not know about it for weeks. They may not never know about it because they might kill and they hide a body. That's right, and they're and and they're undocumented, so they can go anywhere. And how are you going to track them down? That's right, and you won't even know who they are, and you know. And see, the thing is, is that that's a very dangerous situation. These people have been known to work witchcraft. Mexicans, Haitians, Jamaicans, that's the religion. And, and, I'll, tell, and I'll, tell, I'll tell you this, okay? You know, because um, we obviously, we take our cruises, we go through the Caribbean. Do you hear us going to Haiti? You know, there, there's, that's, going to Haiti. We go to, you know, Dominican Republic is first world country, by the way. It's night and day. The Dominican Republic's same island, night and day. And in fact, I've been telling our guy, maybe we should go to Dominican Republic. You know, they, they have the, the, like the hottest women in the Caribbean are from the, the, their two, you single guys. But um, the, um, the one place in the Caribbean no one goes to is Haiti because it's deadly dangerous there. It's, it, it is a complete, a it, it is a, it, it is a, it's, and it is a, they have, they do not have a functioning government. It is an anarchy. Okay. The tr and so when you take people in, that are illegal, that are from Haiti, you don't know what they, they, I know a lot of Haitian people. We have a lot of Haitians here in Florida and they're good people and they make the best. I love that jerk chicken, man. Jerk chicken's awesome. Oh man. Jerk chicken. Oh my goodness. Curry. Yeah. Oh man, is that good. I don't like it in the house because that curry smells hard to get out of the house, but I'll go to the jerk restaurants. But anyway, um, the, um, uh, the, 
the Haitians that we have here in Florida are, are the nicest. They're very conservative people for the most part, very Republican, very Trump, you know, centric as well. But when you take, when you take a family out of that anarchy that's down there and you bring them into your home, you are, t you, if, if you make it through the night alive, you're a lucky person. You know, and, and you could be, and a woman like that, she could be right. Look at that. There's this story out of New York where, where this woman, they're saying she might've been a prostitute. She, she met a John in a hotel in New York. He killed her. You know, I mean, that's the kind of, it's dangerous. And people say, well, you know, she's a prostitute. You know, it's, it's almost like she should expect it. Right. You bring in illegals into your home. Like they're like the, the government is getting lunatic liberal do-gooders like this lady in Boston to do. And then you promote it on the local news as if you're doing a public service, you're going to get people raped and you're going to get people killed. It is high. It is incredibly dangerous. Because they don't want to be out in the streets. So guess what? They're going to try to take over that house. You know what I mean? That, That's right. And they will. And then, yeah. And definitely. And the, and the thing is, is they ain't, you can, don't want nobody know nothing. You know what I'm saying? You may just, she might just end up going missing. All right. Listen, I got, I got to run. Great call. Thanks so much. And uh, first time he's called in, it's been like a normal call. So whatever you took this morning before you called in, do that every day. All right. We'll be right back.
<clears throat> All right. Okay. I'm getting like text messages and stuff. Okay. I, I, I have to correct everything. Okay. With the people, people are, you know, when you're in the line of work I'm in, people are always trying to catch you. Yes. Okay. Jerk food is Jamaican, but we had years ago on our old radio station, we had a sponsor that it was a restaurant that made jerk food that was owned by a Haitian family. And I can't remember the name of the restaurant. We had two different jerk restaurants on at different times. And it was a Haitian family that owned this jerk restaurant. And that's that's the where it comes. Okay, now, remember yesterday I was telling you about this guy that decided he was going to plan his retirement on his own and um, take, take his Social Security early at 62, you know, and he had no pension, no savings, no nothing, and he's got an RV that he's living in. And he doesn't go anywhere with the RV because he can't afford the gas. He gets eight miles a gallon when he pulls the RV in his truck. And um, he spends a lot of time parked in his RV in Walmart parking lots and Cracker Barrel parking lots where there's no electricity or water hookup. Well, last night he slept in his truck without the RV in a parking lot. And I know, isn't this terrible? It's, it's a guy, he's got a YouTube channel I watch. It's really sad. I feel bad for the guy. He, um, he slept in his truck in a parking lot last night, left the RV uh, somewhere else uh, because he couldn't afford the gas money to drive it here to South Florida. And, last, and he couldn't leave his car running all night because it's got an automatic shut off after 30 minutes. And it was a, I, I got up today, it was in the 50s when I left the house. You know, I, I feel so sorry for this guy. You don't want to plan your own retirement. You do not want to plan your own retirement, okay? You're, you're, not only are you a novice and an amateur, there are things that happen in the economy that you don't have the expertise to plan for. And if you don't want to be sleeping in parking lots on cold Florida nights in your car, like this guy I watch on YouTube, you want to call Joe Thomas. Okay, talk to him about annuities. Okay, it's, you know, an annuity is a great supplement to whatever else you have. Maybe, maybe you have an investment account. Maybe you have uh, your Social Security at, at maximum age or not. Maybe you have a pension. It's, it's a great way where you're not risking your money like you do in the stock market. And you can uh, uh, generate income during your retirement. Okay, and Joe Thomas is offering free phone consultations if you mention you heard about him on True Oldies, okay? So here's his number. He's also offering free copies of his book, The Retirement Know-It-All. And the free phone consultation, no matter where you're located, you can take advantage of the free phone consultation with retirement expert with over 30 years in the industry, Joe Thomas. His number, 561-743-0999. 561-743-0999. And if you miss the number, you can just go to his website and get it there. JupiterJoe.com. JupiterJoe.com. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Richard calling from Sebring, Florida, formerly of Boca Raton. Hey, Sebring. Haven't talked to someone in Sebring in a long time. I forgot it was there. <laughs> we, we sometimes do, too. I, yeah. It's a, yeah. Boca was just too expensive for us to move back to. When we left Georgia, so. What's on your mind? Okay, uh, point of correction: jerk pork and jerk, and jerk chicken. That's Jamaican. No, no, no. I just, I just corrected. I just explained that. Okay, we had, uh, I'll, but I'll, I'll explain it again. We used to have a sponsor that a, a, a jerk restaurant that was owned by a Haitian family, and we used to have them on the show, and they used to bring us food to the radio station all the time. And we used to t have them on and talk. That's where that comes from. I, under I know that it is, it's like saying, well, you know, uh, that family, they can't have a, uh, an Italian restaurant. They're not from Italy. You know what I mean? I, know. My wife is and I, I speak a little Creole, a little French also, so mm -hmm. almost every day. <clears throat> but the, the chicken for Haitians would be poule uh, jus uh, or poule en sauce. That's chicken. Yeah, they had the Haitian food too. But I always, but I always got the jerk chicken mostly. Okay, Brian, that's all. Okay, see they want, see that's what they, that's what they try to catch me on. But you can't even catch me on that. You, yeah, believe me, before I open my mouth into a microphone, I think about every uh, syllable out of my mouth. All right, now 
Um, you're welcome to continue to call in about that. I was very surprised. It, you, know, you know, you never know. You never know where the show's going to go, right? I spent all this time doing show prep, and I mentioned one thing in passing, and 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 here you are. You never know where where the show's going to go, but but um, that's a big one. Now, I do want to um, the the um, the coven of the view are in daily panic attacks because they have realized that uh, you know and we've known this for a long time, but but liberals like the the coven of the view, it's finally sinking in that Donald Trump is going to win re-election, okay? And, th- and <laughs> now, that it's, uh, now that it's sinking into them that President Trump is going to win re-election, they're, st- they're, they're panicking and they're trying to scare people into all kinds of things. Listen to Joy Behar. The Russians going into Ukraine and then to Crimea and then to Poland. What's next? France? By the way, uh, has anyone told Joy Behar the Russians have gone into Ukraine and they took Crimea when Obama was president? So they are not only do they, uh, Crimea is Russia, they have a naval base there. They, they took Crimea years ago. Sam, what that means. Yeah. You know, I saw this video of all these young MAGA guys celebrating Trump and Buffett. Well, you know what? You guys will be draft age. Yeah. You want to start up with Russian, the Russians going into Ukraine and then to Crimea and then to Poland. What's next? Yeah. France? Germany, Italy, you think Americans are not going to be involved in that kind of a war? That's what you're looking at with this guy. You know, I mean, I hate to bring up Hitler, but before before Hitler became powerful, yeah. he stuck his little toe in. Mm-hmm. And the Brits and the Americans, everybody appeased him and yeah. said, he's not going to get worse. And then they gave over the Sudeten land to him. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, he's invading Poland. And then he's occupying France. And then he gets Mussolini on his side. This is what Putin is going to do. It's very, very urgent that we not elect this man. It's not just about us. It's not about just the economy. It's about the world's geopolitical Okay, yeah, well, you know, she still thinks Crimea is independent. Okay, now, so they're going to draft MAGA guys, and uh, Europe is going to be taken over by Russia if you vote MAGA. You know, yeah, this is going to be a fun year because the panic in the left, as, as we get closer to November, wait until after Trump wins South Carolina and creams uh, Nikki Haley. Oh, that, that's when it's really going to get panic mode for these people. And uh, you know what? You know, so far as uh, 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 the dra- first off, well, there's not going to be a draft, okay? There's not going to be a draft, and we're certainly not going to draft people to send them to fight for Ukraine. I was watching Pavlo in Ukraine on YouTube, and if you're on hold, stand by. Uh, and I often tell people because we only have uh, 20 seconds left till the top. So if you're on hold, we'll get to your calls after the top of the hour. Pavlo from Ukraine is a 20-something guy in Ukraine. He's a YouTuber. And I follow his channel to get the real news out of Ukraine. He took his bikini model girlfriend um, uh, on a a cross-country road trip through the snows of Ukraine to Kiev. And as they're driving across Ukraine, I didn't see any fighting, rockets, destruction, nothing. Just a normal day. All right, if you're on hold, stand by. Back after this. WWNN Pompano Beach.
God's people. Seven times over the course of <laughs> the last six years, dude, the VA has continued to let me down. Oh my goodness. It's true. All right, callers on hold, stand by. Hour number three has begun. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane joining us. Hey, Steve. Morning. Oh, boy. Crazy day today. Crazy day. Well, well, it's a Steve Kane show. You can all—it's always open phones for you. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's just, if you're on hold, though, stand by. You know, we'll I'm get back. Uh, when I went to sleep last night, when I, uh, when I go to bed, it's early, but by the time I fall asleep, it's the wee small hours of the morning. The last thing I heard on this race in New York. Are you familiar with? Which one? You talking about this? The um, uh, the the Santo seat. Yes, the Santo seat. Mm. Did we lose that? Yeah. Yeah, a Democrat woman who barely speaks English won it. Does this mean we're no longer in control of the... Uh... No, no, because that seat's been vacant for a while. We have like a one-seat majority. Well, if the, if the guy won the seat... Uh, no, but the, the, the latest... No, 
but Santos has been gone for a couple of months now. So with, with him, we've had like a one or two seat majority. So we're, we still have a one or two seat majority. Depends on who calls in sick on a particular day. But we, we, we have a slim majority. No, we, we, we still have the majority, just barely. I mean, we impeach, we impeach Mayorkas by one vote. Okay, that answers one of some of my concerns. The other question is, who is, uh, who is president this morning? What? Who is president? Uh, Joe, Bi Joe, Joe Biden. Right? No. No, 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 that's no, no. The, the, the uh, Biden is probably has a role, has some responsibility in the impeachment of Mayorkas so that he can get a new uh, media narrative going away from him. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you want to take some calls? The phone's very busy this morning. I, I'm caught up. I, I, you know, I, you know, but, you know. Okay. If you want to an update what's going on here, lately, there was a fight going on between Jean Pierre and. Uh, who was the that one I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> I heard she broke up with her girlfriend, Jean Pierre, and her girlfriend uh, from CNN split, I've been told. Uh, She's. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, hi, it's Joan from Tampa Bay. Hey, Joan. Hey, how's it going? Um, <coughs> speaking about what he said about the coven, the view coven. Yes. And saying that he's going to start all these wars and stuff. Uh, remember when he was running in 2016, they said, you know, we had the problems with Rocket Man. You got to turn, uh, Joan, you got to turn down the volume of whatever device you're listening. Hold on. You've got to turn down the volume of whatever device you're listening to us on in the background. There's a delay, and it makes it hard to hear you and understand you. Just turn the volume down of whatever you're listening to the show on in the background. I did. Okay, great. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you know, the, the coven of the view, mm -hmm. while um, Trump was running in 2016, and we were having problems with Rocket Man, right? Mm. They said he's going to bring us into a war with North Korea. Correct. They're going to have nuclear weapons. Well, guess what happened? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Into North Korea, he took care of it. Bada bing, bada boom. That's right. So they tried this scare tactic then. Do you think they're going to work now? See, this is the, the way Trump does foreign policy is a little different. When there's things going on in the world, the way the rest of these government officials, they're all like Biden. They're like, okay, how can I make money off of this? So, you know, so, okay, we'll do, we'll send the army over there. We'll do this. We'll do that. And the donors will get paid. They'll pay me and we'll make money. Would Trump, like in North Korea, this is what happened in North Korea. President Trump called up his good friend, Dennis Rodman, who's friends with Kim Jong-un. And Dennis Rodman set up this whole summit with Kim Jong-un and Trump. Trump goes to, he, by the way, he walked into North Korea, if you remember. He crossed the DMZ, President Trump. No president has ever done that. And he went to Kim Jong-un and he said, you see how, you see South Korea? And, and he says, yeah. And he says, well, that could be North Korea. All right, stop all this crap and you'll be rich just like South Korea. And boom, he does it. That, I mean, you know, that, and, that's, and that's how he'll handle Russia. Russia is a, a, a major producer of oil and natural gas. And President Trump will use that to get Putin to do what he wants him to do. And that's it, as opposed to, you know, sending munitions to Ukraine and getting a commission off of it like Biden. He knows how to tell other countries how to make money and to be businessmen and to, you know. That's right. Countries. But what you're saying is great. The only, the only problem that I see with this is that uh, Trump's not going to take office for eight or nine months. Well, we, well we, that's... Get through that. We have no choice but to write it out, Steve. Yeah, we got to pray. That's all we can do is pray right now. And, and vote. And vote come November. Yes. That's, what we can do. That's, that's right. All right. Appreciate the call, Joe. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is 
Steve. How you doing, Brian? All right. How are you? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, I'm just uh, going to answer uh, Brian's uh, question. Is uh, no, they no no illegals that I don't know that they can speak English going to move in my house. I'm sorry about all that. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to happen. That's not going to happen. No, well, that's good. All right. Well, you're 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 a wise man. Thanks thanks for your call. Um, I wanted to play this. Uh, this is it's a little unrelated to what we're doing, but I wanted to, you know when the internet was new, <clears throat> and when they talked about the internet, what we were told about the internet <clears throat> was many things, none of which came true. But one of the things we were told about the internet is that we were going to have a nation of 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 children that were the most informed, best educated ever. Right, the most informed ever, right? I mean, there was that was just the way it was going to be, and what it's done is it's done away with books and learning and such, and we have the dumbest of all. This, I just saw this on Twitter. Uh, I want to share this with you. This is a girl. She uh, she's an American girl. She traveled to Europe and encountered that there's a particular holiday that they don't celebrate in Europe. And she's very confused as to why not. Listen, I you can't make this stuff up. This is the uh, youth of today. Um, right. I have a bone to pick with Europeans. So I was traveling around <coughs> Europe um, over the Christmas holidays. And um, whilst I was in Denmark, I got chatting to someone. I can't remember how we got into the conversation or the topic. But um, basically, she proceeded to tell me that they don't celebrate 4th of July. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, we don't celebrate. Why would, you why would we celebrate it? Like, why would you not celebrate this? Like, that's like not celebrating Christmas. Are you okay? Um, and then I was like, um, when I traveled to London, again, I was like still in the back of my mind. I was like, that was weird though. So I want to ask some more people. Got chatting to some other people in London. Again, no, they don't celebrate it there. What do you mean you don't have fireworks and eat food and celebrate? They were like, well, we don't, what? it's not the USA. It's a world thing, though. It, everyone celebrates it. I'm confused. Am I just being really dumb? I feel really stupid right now. Yeah, you should feel stupid, and your parents should be ashamed. So we've got this lunatic college American girl walking through the streets of London asking Londoners if they celebrate the 4th of July and is very confused as to why they do not. Um, and I'd like to say that she's unusual. I think she's typical for today's youth in this country. <laughs> and uh, now if you don't know why there's a problem with that, you know, I'm not going to explain to you. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. It's Mike from Houston. How are you? All right, Mike. Hey, Steve. Hey, uh, just want to say something about uh, that woman from Boston who called in and actually opened up her home. And, you know, I mean, I, I understand you know, that she means well, but my question is where is her humanitarian concerns for like all the homeless veterans who are living under Uber passes or living in homeless homeless shelters. How come there's no concern for them? Uh, maybe doesn't carry enough cachet with the Brahmin elite of Boston. I don't know. The, well, the, the, I'm gonna, I might play the audio again because I want people to understand what's going on here. But she, this, what this white liberal woman has done is moved illegals into her, her home so they can work as her house slaves. Yeah, and that brings up another issue, by the way. If enough, because I used to be an account examiner with the Texas Workforce Commission, and I will tell you something. If enough, enough time goes by, that constitutes an employment relationship. She's her, the, she's the employer. They're her employees. And if enough time goes by, that that uh, board is considered a wage, and she's supposed to be paying into the state unemployment insurance. Mm. Well, well, that's the le that's the least of her problems. Her, she's first got to make sure they don't rape and murder her in her sleep. Yes, yeah. But I'm just this, this is the kind of good intentions boomerang boomeranging back to bite the person in the in the posterior. But uh, yeah, again, getting but my, the real point I want to get at is there are thousands, tens of thousands of homeless veterans in this country who need help. Why was where was her concern? Yeah. All right, All right, take care. Appreciate that call. Oh, he's he's gone, Steve. But we can continue. Well, I'm. I you got to tell me before. I I didn't know. Well, at Saskat now we can we can still talk. Well, I was going to ask him since he said he was from Houston, where that shooting occurred over the weekend. That the boy mm. shooting the, the transgender shooter. The 
church, Osteen's shooter. Uh, I was, I had not heard anybody comment on this, but it struck me. Everybody that I saw working on that, the police that were working on that case and preparing for the report to address the public and bring everybody up to date, everybody that works for the Houston Police Department that I saw involved, there must have been five or six people, every one of them was over 300 pounds. Yes, I noticed that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, gigantic. Yeah. Overweight. Yeah. I mean, grossly. Morbid, overweight, uh, and I was going to ask him what the hell they're doing there. You know? Eating too much, and you know the the I I saw when I when I <laughs> when I was in high school, um, and I worked at Publix on Davy Boulevard. When I was in high school, there was a shoplifter, and the police were running after the shoplifter, and they ran from the parking lot. They crossed the street. It was on Davy Boulevard. And the cop had to stop and catch his breath. He was so overweight and uh, out of shape. And the guy just ran off with his whatever he stole. Um, not in the world of woke. You don't have requirements anymore, Steve. You just got to be woke. Notice it, sir. You and I notice it. That's good. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, listen, we'll uh, take our break and be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. The Steve Kane Show live on air now. 888 Go K1. This is the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. This is Steve Kane. I want to tell you about my favorite restaurant in all of South Florida Wings Plus in Coral Springs. Wings just the way you like them. Plum, tender, and delicious. Crispy on the outside, succulent on the inside. Everything homemade, nothing comes out of a can. Dozens of specialty sauces that will make your mouth water. Wings Plus, located in Coral Springs, a mile west of University on the south side of Sample Road. Hey, it's Scott from Margarita Village C. Make planning your next adventure in 2024 a breeze with Margarita Village C's fan favorite. Buy one, get one free sale. Whether you're looking for a quick weekend getaway to soak up the Caribbean sun or family fun on a longer vacation to Key West in Mexico, Margarita Village C has got you covered with cruises for two starting at just $99. Use your savings to splurge on exclusive Grand Terra Suites aboard the all new Islander and save up to $1,500. Unlock the ultimate license to chill and book your ticket to paradise today at margaritavillacy.com. All right, we are back. I'm Brian. Steve is here. Okay, it's, you know, it's a weird thing with this business. You know, there's a lot of news, a lot of things we talk about, and then one little thing will, like, trigger the audience, and you never know what's going to be. So I want to replay this in a moment that I played in the, in the first hour and in the last hour because I think it's important, you know, and it does relate to the impeachment of Mayorkas. Now, here's, here's a sad reality. Um, we could barely get Mayorkas impeached. If the trial takes place in the Senate, he's going to be acquitted, okay? And there's a lot of talk going on that I, uh, that I saw online yesterday that Schumer uh, may be able to stop an impeachment trial from even happening. Um, I don't know if he'll be successful in that, but 
Mayorkas is not going to be removed. And this is going to, and, and I don't think that Schumer wants to not have the trial. Biden is on the ropes right now in an impeachment trial and an impeachment of a cabinet official for the first time in a century and a half can get the focus off of his mental decline. So Biden want, and Joe Biden too want the impeachment trial to happen. But um, I was talking about this, this uh, new thing that I've seen a lot of stories about online, and I played this one story, which I'll play again in a moment, that liberals in these sanctuary cities around the country are taking illegals into their homes. And the first time I saw this over the weekend is a husband and wife went on, uh, they were up north, they went, they, they went online, they filled out an application to turn their home into a place where illegals could come and stay. Ten minutes after they filled out the form, the phone rang, and it was the government calling to bring over a carload of illegals. And then I saw this story yesterday that is uh, scary as can be. It's uh, Channel 10 News out of Boston. A white liberal woman took in a, uh, a man and a woman claiming to be husband and wife from Haiti, although they speak Spanish, not Creole, and a child. And she's turned them into her slaves. And uh, they're house slaves. They're doing housework. And um, I played this in the first two hours. I want to play it again for context because we kind of lost the focus of where we were going. Then I want to comment on it a little bit. So here, if you're on hold, stand by. Boston, a migrant family from Haiti is sharing their experience. They're searching for shelter in the Boston area and then recently found a host home in Brookline. And now they're looking for jobs. As NBC 10's Aaron Logan reports, they say these last few weeks have been life-changing. And it's been an emotional few weeks for Logande Joseph and her husband. First, sleeping on the floor at Logan Airport, then in Children's Hospital with their two-year-old daughter who got very sick. She felt bad as any mother would. Now things are looking much brighter as they've been welcomed into Lisa Hillenbrand's Brookline apartment. Tu niña es muy alegre ahora. She says her daughter yeah. is very happy. Yeah. When she wakes up in the morning, she says, Hi, Lisa, and everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight. And it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Wildande loves cooking. Te gusta la ocupación? Sí. In fact, her goal is to open up her own restaurant. The couple has their work permits, and they've been taking English classes. Yo, cualquier trabajo va a ser para guardar mi dinero para... They're open to work anywhere to save money for their future. In the meantime, they're enjoying their time with Lisa, their new friend for life, and their daughter's new grandmother. They are hardworking. They want to learn. They want to be successful. And I feel great helping, and I get to understand the refugee crisis from the inside. Lisa says she's so impressed by the number of people she's met right here at Brookline Town Hall meetings who've been stepping up and hosting families. She's hopeful more will do the same in the coming days and weeks. Okay, so she's got two slaves. They're black, by the way. Uh, doing her housework, cleaning her house, cooking her meals, and taking care of her daily needs for free, okay? And, and it's such a good thing for her. She's telling all of her friends to do it. And I'm here to tell you that there is nothing more dangerous than what she's doing here, okay? Um, you don't know who these people are. They are whoever they say they are. There's zero vetting. And you bring a man and a woman and a child into your home as a single woman, even if you've got a family, you're risking your life. And, and the Biden regime is doing this nationwide, nationwide. And uh, this, they're going to get people killed. If this woman wakes up one morning and decides she doesn't want these people in her house, how is she going to get them to leave? And what will this guy's reaction be? Do you think he'll be all fun and games like he is with the TV reporter? Maybe. But I know this. Haiti is one of the most dangerous places in this hemisphere to visit. I had a Haitian call me an hour ago who said if I walked the streets of Port-au-Prince, I'd be dead. 
It'd be a dead man. You're going to bring people from those streets into your home like this lady, and the news is passing it off as some public service announcement? I'm sorry. Incredibly dangerous. All right, let's uh, go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, yes. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Yes, this is Daniel from London, Kentucky. Me too. I want to talk about the, uh, you know, the woman that brought the family in. Mm. You know, this is uh, pathetic to me that Democrats has got so many evil policies. But I would just like to know, other than the slavery she's brought into her house, how much income has she got coming into her house through government or state assistance as far as the, the illegals and providing her through assistance of uh, the state or the government? That's a good question. She might she might be getting paid, yeah. And, and you know, and just like I say, there's so many Americans that are homeless brought in from the drug epidemic. I can go less than a mile in any direction. But you know what? But 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 you know what though? Hold on a second. Are you going to bring those homeless drug addicts uh, from the streets of America into your home? I don't think so. No, I'm not. And and and, and far as this assim assimilating into American culture, they're not going to do it. They bring their their beliefs and their background with them, and 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 mostly it's from a third world country. And what, what are you going to expect from from people like this? This this woman could wake up raped with her throat cut. This is this is very very dangerous, and this is being this is happening in American cities all over the country right now. And there's not a lot of reporting. This was the local news in Boston where I pulled that from. Thanks thanks for your call, by the way. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Rebecca from Plantation. Hey, Rebecca. Um, <clears throat> really got me to call this morning. I usually call. Listen. First of all, the lady is not Haitian. She has sort of like a Mexican type of accent. Mm -hmm. I'm Spanish. I'm Cuban. Oh, slow down, slow down. Okay, perfect, perfect, Cuban. Okay, what I let me recap this, and then let's get your expert. Uh, uh, hold on, hold, slow down, slow down, slow down. Call. Okay, I'm so glad you called. This family claims to be from Haiti, and Haiti they speak Creole and French. Okay, the family are speaking Spanish. I, so I've been wanting a native Spanish speaker to call in and hear, and tell me if they detect a Haitian accent in the Spanish. So you're Cuban-American, you're not hearing a Haitian accent. What are you hearing? No, 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 no. She does not have an accent at all when she speaks Spanish. She sounds Mexican. She's not from Dominican either. She doesn't have a... I'm very good with accents. So she's lying. She's lying. Yeah, but... He, on the other hand, is Haitian, which is when he speaks Spanish, which is what he's had to do to communicate with her. He has a Haitian accent. So, now, okay, now stop, so stop down, so stop down. This is, this is interesting. He has a Haitian accent, she has a Mexican accent, and there's a child with them. How do we know they're married? No, but that's not, that, that's not why I called. I just wanted to clear that up because I knew you wanted to know. I'm a little bit disappointed. Brian, I agree with you 98% of the time. I'm disappointed in you because I know what your take is that it's dangerous. It is. But honestly, do you have you have to see some good in, the, in, in this person trying to help, number one. It's probably going to make herself feel good. But the other thing that you said that upset me was the fact that she's using them as blame. She is. Yeah, a little bit too far, Brian. They're doing how they're they're doing housework and cooking her meal. House slaves, yes. Yeah. No, but that's their way of giving back to her because they're you know they're not going to stay. Do 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 you think do do you think that this is dangerous what she's doing? Yes and no. Yes I, and no. I don't. Yes, and, I you. Okay, hold, hold slow down, slow down. You're you're in, you're in plant you're in plantation. Okay, which by the way by the way. Uh, black activists are trying to get have been trying for years to get Plantation to change its name because they think it's racist. Okay, it's so stupid. It's not. It, there, there's more plantations than just slave plantations. Okay, it's not the only kind of plantation. But anyway, <laughs> it's not named after slave plantation. I I I, I used my I used to live in Plantation. Okay, 
uh, in the French Quarter uh, over there. But yeah. But anyway, uh, in, in, in Broward County, you're in Plantation, go to any street quarter and find a homeless uh, guy begging for money. You're going to bring him and his family into your plantation home? <laughs> it is! It is! They're, these are illegal aliens that you know nothing about. I agree that you don't know anything about them, but you also have to have some compassion. If you see a couple with a child and she's trying to help them, don't make it as though it's like the horrible thing. Because it's not. It shows a, a little bit of a... A screenshot of your heart. I know you're a compassionate person. I think they, uh, you're taking this too far. That's all I'm now, listen, liberalism, liberalism, can, you know, uh, okay. During the, um, during the uh, war in Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, the second war in Iraq with George W. Bush, there were these liberal American do-gooders who traveled to Iraq and camped out at power plants and water plants and such to try to stop them from being bombed by U.S. forces. They called themselves human shields. We had uh, a couple of Marines live in studio that were fought, that fought in that war when they returned home. And they, were, they told us this story about how when, they, when the Marine, in their unit, when they would approach Iraqi targets that they were about to take over, groups of um, liberal American human shields were running towards them for say, help us, Marines, the Marines, help us, because the Iraqis were going to kill them. Liberalism may, in theory, have some good intentions, but it can also get you killed. And this, and this woman, you agree they're lying. You said the woman's got a Mexican accent. He's Haitian. She's not. So, uh, you don't, so she's a liar. They're in her home. You don't think this woman's life is at risk? I don't, I don't think so, Brian. Oh, Listen, you're at risk driving a car. You just never know. But she was just, oh. Do I agree with what she's doing? No, I would never do it. I agree with you there. However, there's so much need in this in this country already with orphans and families that are women in distress with their kids. I've seen it. I've I've helped. So okay. So no no no. I, so so no no no. You can no you can. So this, I'm so glad. See, we're going to get some insight into this. So the illegal family that lived with you in Plantation, how's that working out? No, I did take in a, a, a family in once, not not recently. Tell us about no, no. So they were. That's that's not the same. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about friends or of friends you're allowing to stay with you. I'm talking about illegals that you don't know that have no references that. No, 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 no. We all help people. I'm talking about the illegals, undocumented, unvetted. If you, uh, do you have a family of unvetted? Why isn't she helping? Why are you? So, so you do not have any. So you do not have an illegal family in your in your home. No, I have. Why not? Why not? Aren't you? Aren't aren't you compassionate? I mean, I'm a meanie. You said I'm a meanie. No, you said I'm. Me you said you're disappointed in me, but you you believe as I do. Your argument is wrong. Not that they're they're gonna kill her and that they're slaves. Your argument should be what you said. At oh, the it's sh well. I oh. Say to take people in that you don't know. Period. Just leave it at that. Don't add that they're slaves and that the one day she's gonna wake up and she's murdered. Yeah. Taking it too far. No, I'm not. All right. Pre pre we're, we're late for the break. Thanks for the call. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. Thank you. It's the Steve King Show with Brian Craig. No, just normal. I'll just do it. Yeah. Gotcha. I was going to say, have you called during, during the segment and then just go to the commercial? Yeah. Um, no, we'll just do it normal. I took that, that what he's asking about, I took that break like eight minutes late because of the conversation with the lady. 
I shouldn't have taken the call, but I saw she was on hold for like a really long time. So I took it when I shouldn't have and were like...
All right, we're back. I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. There are two openings on the board. Very busy phones today. You know, see, there have been two people that disagreed with me today about bringing in these illegals into their homes, both of them foreign-born with accents. And that's because they relate to that experience and um, have not been properly Americanized. Yeah. You're on the air. What's your name? Where you? By the way, uh, before we... Uh, hold on, caller. Uh, that uh, Let me put you back on hold because it's loud. Uh, I just want to say that um, that commercial that Tom Laporta recorded is the ni nicest, sweetest commercial I've ever heard someone record. Uh, Steve and I had no part in the writing of that commercial. Tom wrote that commercial himself and recorded it here with with Mike, our board op, and that that was just very nice. And it was, um, and I want to thank all of you listeners out there for making uh, Tom Laporta and all of our sponsors' relationship with uh, you and this audience so wonderful. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <clears throat> Good morning. Yeah, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, B. Good morning. Hey, I. How you doing? Good. Good to, good, to, good to hear you, buddy. Uh, the last three callers basically said it all. For you people who are listening, I think you just got to go back and, and play the tape over and play the show again because they basically said what I what I wanted to say. Um, I worked I worked there in the '90s uh, doing a lot of ballet, and I had a lot of Spanish friends. I grew up around Haitians, Bahamians, Jamaicans. The lady hit it right on the head when she talked about dialect, because there's certain tones and frequency and dialect. Like a Puerto Rican speaks really fast, or Cuban speaks fast. Certain people from Central and South America they speak to have a slow, and, and it's all about region. So they are not Haitian. Maybe the guy could be, but they are not Haitian. Now we also so 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 now slow down, so slow down, slow down. So they're liars. They've entered the country illegally. They've, uh, uh, according to multiple callers today, they have lied. Uh, who are native speakers? They have lied about their country of origin. So that's that's you know, and they're and and they're in this woman's home. How do we even know they're married? And this is their child. Just keep this in mind, you Democrats, that. Always the liberal ladies that bring forward to accuse you of X, Y, Z. This lady is just another part of their, of their programming to distract us from the real things. Whatever happened to Hunter, whatever happened to Biden and his papers, and whatever happened to this and that. Well, that's all happening. No, this is important. And this, and, and this uh, by the way, I'd be appreciate the call. Um, this fits into the impeachment of Mayorkas, what we're doing today. What Mayorkas is doing is criminal. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Katina from Baltimore. Hey, Katina. Um, Brian, I just want to add three things uh, to what you're saying. I agree with you, by the way. Uh, number one, I understand they were offering people money to take in the illegals. That's one. Uh, secondly, um, Thanks, this, Bruce. I feel this is a, a precursor <clears throat> to mandating it, mandating that we take in uh, you know, these migrants, these illegals. Oh, uh, uh, and what, what evidence? Hold on, what's, what evidence do you have that that's it's, true? It's a test. This is what this is what they do. This is what Democrats do. This is what politicians do. mandate. Well, wouldn't that go against the Quartering Act? I mean, that's against the very ba basics of our Bill of Rights. Obeying the laws. Well, there you go. Um, and three. Does everybody remember the Obama phone line with the, the uh, actress? Mm-hmm. Everybody in Cleveland's got an Obama phone, yes. I think uh, intimating. So uh, people are, uh, we're gullible. You know, we believe whatever, you know, we hear or see, and you have to question everything. Mm-hmm. Well, well, this this story here. The reason I'm sharing this story, and I did, I had no idea this was. I wasn't even going to bring this up today. I, I uh, shared I shared this on my podcast last night. I and I didn't realize that it would inspire a three hour, um, very full phone board of calls. If Joyce Calpin's listening, this is how you do a radio show. Um, you never know. But the the thing about um, that, the reason I share it is because the Democrats are doing this nationwide. They're getting. They're getting um, liberals to bring illegals into their home, and and I'm I'm trying to help people. This is dangerous. 
It's incredibly, it's incredibly dangerous. And, 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 and it has to be, it, it, and, and the way they're promoting it on the local news that I, in that audio, it, this was like a, a, a public service story they did. Uh, they're promoting it. They're promoting it. And, 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 and I would not be surprised if the news was paid by the government or some, or some charitable organization to do that story because, or, or, or the Catholic charities, you know, that are, that are deep into this and uh, to encourage more people to risk their lives by bringing undocumented. And you've heard, we've had several native speakers call in today who have said that that woman does not have an Haitian accent. One said she has a Mexican accent. So they're lying about their country of origin. What else are they lying about? Well, uh, I, I agree with you again. And uh, by trying to uh, make it sound like, oh, look, you'll have a free, uh, uh, ha you'll have a housekeeper, you'll have a cook, you'll, you'll have someone, a handyman or something. Well, that's what she's got. And, 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 this, and, and, and there, it, it is slavery. These are, they, they, they're in a country where they don't speak the language, they have no contacts here, uh, they have no transportation. This is indentured servitude. All right, Katina, we'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning, 6 to 9, right here on. All right, and it's time to check in with William Youngerman from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated with the Morning Gold and Precious Metals Report. William Youngerman, how are the metals looking today? Uh, metals looking stable after yesterday's big roller coaster ride. <clears throat> Seeing gold trading yesterday from a low of $1,990 all the way to a high of 2030 It started off on the high <clears throat> yesterday, and then the CPI uh, index came out higher than expected, and that turned all of the markets south big time. The stock market losing over 525 points on the close. And um, the uh, metals as well, all, all going down uh, Bonds going down, causing interest rates to go up, which is the concern with the Fed. So that being said, we get this uh, market uh, that has been very sideways for quite a quite a while for the precious metals. Uh, gold holding around two, uh, uh, 2020 for quite some time, and then uh, after getting down around close to the two, uh, 2010, we broke that yesterday, breaking the $2,000 support level and taking us back down to around that low of. Uh, 1988, 1990, which has been the real strong support for gold on, on previous occasions when we've seen this happen. That being said, great buying opportunity yesterday. We saw a lot of people coming in, uh, taking advantage of that dip, uh, one of our best selling days that we've had in a while. And, uh, and people know that the, these, these dips are temporary and, uh, and give us great buying opportunity. So gold closed yesterday down $26.80 at $1,992.70 the ounce. Silver was down 58 cents after trading in a range of 21.93 all the way up to 23 dollars, and uh, that 22 dollar area of support did hold yesterday, closing out the day at 22 dollars and seven cents, down 58 cents. Platinum down 18 dollars yesterday, closing at 8.72. Palladium below platinum now, closing down 34 dollars yesterday at 850 dollars the ounce. This morning we've seen gold trading overnight in a range of 1986 to 1994. Currently at 1991, that sounds just a dollar seventy. The uh, silver uh, up nine cents right now at $22.15. Platinum uh, up $18 at $890, and palladium up $26 at $876. So the markets seem to be trying to stabilize. Remember, one day does not a market make. And that being said, that what, yesterday may just be the best buying day we've. Uh, buying opportunity we've had. See how this plays out today. Very important day to day to see if the metals can come back a little bit. The stock market's trying to rally back a little bit. And uh, that's about where we're starting. Yeah, and, and today, obviously, a good day for, to, to pick up gold. I know a lot of people have been waiting for, for a dip like we're seeing right now. And uh, so w when, it, when it comes to buying gold in the one-ounce form, uh, what, are, what are some of the best uh, gold coins to buy right now where you get the most gold for your money? Well, all of, all of them are good, giving us great buying opportunity. The, uh, of course, the kangaroos, we've always liked those the best. And um, from Australia's Perth Mint. But the U.S. Eagles and Buffaloes are, are, are back to normal pricing, very reasonable uh, as far as their you know, normal uh, percentages. And, um, the, uh, of course, the, the gold bars are still your cheapest form, but not the most interesting form to buy. Yeah. Yeah, and the American Gold Eagle and the American Gold Buffalo um, it, it, in the past have been 
uh, like the Silver Eagles used to be, really, really highly priced, and they've come back down to normal price, so you're getting a great deal on those as well. William Youngman opens up at 10 a.m. His number, toll-free, 1-800-327-5010, 1-800-327-5010. Online, williamyoungerman.com, or stop in at 150 East Palmetto Park Road on the uh, in Boca on the first floor of the Bank of America building, just east of US-1. Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. All right, William Youngerman, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. Back after this. The Social Justice Warriors for Breakfast now. All right, the phones are very busy. You want to go back to the phone, Steve? Sure. All right, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Joellen from Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Joellen. Hey, Joellen. How are you doing today? Hi there. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Hope you guys are too. Um, I, I'm wondering, you said that this woman is, lives in an apartment. So does that mean she owns her apartment? Or? Well, we don't know that she lives in an apartment. Uh, I, 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 unless they said in the story and I missed it, she she lives in, in the Boston area. Oh, okay. I thought it was an apartment. I was going to say, what kind of uh, apartment? You know, usually you have to have you know these people approved on a lease. And what what are the uh, what would the other residents be thinking about that? Would they approve of that? You're engaging them as well. Absolutely. People that do stuff like that, they get deserve deserve every bit they get. I have no sympathy for them. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I'm I'm gonna hold hold on a second. You know, liberals. A lot of liberal. Uh, li she's a liberal do-gooder. She, you know, and uh, probably a little bit racist too. She thinks she's she's particularly excited that they're black. Um, I I don't think it occurs to her that it's dangerous. I, I really don't. I think she's so brainwashed in her Boston liberalism that she thinks she's doing the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, well, these people they they want to um, go to it's, they want to go to China. They want to go all over the world to adopt these babies instead of doing something right here at home. It's just like or animals. They'll they'll be a hurricane hurricane. And they'll, they'll want those dogs, or they want those cats. They won't we're not, look at, we're look not at talking home. about. We're not talking about uh, adopting. Adopting. Well, no, it, well, it, it's it's similar. People help the people here in your own country before going. You know, taking in these um, illegals. I mean. Yeah. And you know, part of part of the reason that they're bringing them into people's homes, by the way, is it makes it harder for people to track where they are. It's a way to have them uh, hidden in America. Well, one other thing I heard, I'm not sure it was right, but um, where they can maybe override um, Michael um, Johnson if he refuses to take on that uh, bill. I, I've never heard it. No, I'm not. A, I, 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 I've never... Um, Listen, these people are making up their own rules and constitutional amendments by the day, so th they can do anything. These, this, we're, this country is being run by outlaws. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah, so they can do anything. Yes, the, 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 the separation of power, the process for a bill to become law are not in place under this corrupt government. Mm -mm. All right, appreciate the call, Joellen. Take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, good morning. Brian is Doris. Hey, Doris. Hey, good morning, Steve. Hi, listen, the, I'm doing great. I, I live with a daughter. Thanks be to God, hallelujah, because uh, I eat well, I am clean, I'm 94. Bruce, thanks for that. I, it, uh, life is beautiful, but there are many, many old people, and that's what's happening here. We're talking about an old woman whose alternative is a nursing home at $10,000 a month that she doesn't have, and maybe she has no children that can take her in. You're talking, you people are, are reacting from Brian. He's in his 50s. He's got no problems. He's got a wife. Uh, hang on one second, Doris. So you, as you listen, I know you're a big fan of the show and a big fan of Brian's. Are you a little bit disappointed that the non-Christian way he's, there doesn't seem to be a lot of charity in his heart. Well, I think that I've heard a lot of people criticize the Catholic Church for all the work they're doing in the charity uh, department. No, I'm, and, about, and, I'm, I'm personalizing it. I'm saying, Brian, did you did you expect a different? Were you surprised that Brian's 
taking the position he did. No, because he's young. Really? So, so, so let me, so let me tell you. Let me, so let me, let, let me ask. By the way, we have a full board of calls. Um, as the show con- concludes. Um, so when when the German army came into Paris, should the people of Paris just welcome them and been charitable to them? They needed some more space. They needed some more space. No, we're being invaded. We're D- Doris. We're be- we're being invaded. I agree, and we've got to do something about it. You don't bring invaders into your house. I'm not against charity, but you don't bring invaders into your house to live. Then they, she doesn't see them as invaders, and I hope the people who put them in there don't uh, well. they are invaders. All right. He's going to be safe. You- yeah, let's hope. Why don't I? Okay, I'll go to Boston over the weekend in a month, and I'll check on it. Maybe, yeah. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Deerfield. Hey, Brian. Brian, made some great points today. I think people got to be very, very cautious. We set up a very dangerous gray area. One thing we're forgetting, a lot of these people that came into this country illegally, the traffickers are holding markers on them, and they owe these traffickers money, and they've got to find a way to pay it back to them, or maybe their families are endangered from where they came from. Yeah, and this woman's bank account could probably help with that. Anything else that she owns, like a car or anything. Yeah. And that's, this could create a massive crime wave. Or they could just grab her credit cards. They could they could charge her cards. Absolutely. People forgetting about this. And this is such a, a very dangerous president. Can I have a quick question? Um, the line of succession, if Brian was to step down and Kamala was to be next in line, she was born in Canada, though, wasn't she? No, no. She was born in California, and when she when her parents divorced and they took her to Canada. She couldn't be vice president if she was born in but then again, Ted Cruz was born in Canada. Yeah, there you go. Okay. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you think it's going to play out? Uh, no, what do you mean? Gonna, well, he, he, there's a battle for who's... Well, she may, she may end up... She may be, be, uh, she may be the president soon. Maybe. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, bet about, I would say about a 30% chance of it. And, and a week ago, it was zero. You're on the air. Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're seconds left. I'd say uh, we're screwed. I mean, she's an idiot. That's what I'd say. Yeah, are there enough safeguards built in the I don't know. Biden's, you know, I mean, she, she can't be worse than Biden. She's, you know, she might be bad in different ways, but she can't be worse than Biden. You're, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, Brian, why'd you hang up on me yesterday and make that point? Um, because, because you said F you at the top of your lungs. That's why I hung up on you yesterday. All right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Yes. You're on the air. Oh. Hi. This is Ed from Coral Springs. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. You got ten seconds. Okay. I'll give you a quick answer about this lady, the Haitian lady. They're from Dominican Republic. Well, they, they say they're Haitian. They said they're Haitian. Yes, they're Haitian, but Haitians but realize that in the Dominican Republic we have over three and a half million uh, illegal. All right, all right, we're out of time. Oh my goodness. Dominican Republic is not Haiti, same island, different Listen, we have a full board of calls. Hang in there. If you stay on the line, you'll be first up tomorrow morning when we're back at six AM. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve's been here. I'm Brian Craig. See you tomorrow morning at six AM. WSFS 104.3 HD3. All right, guys, I got to run. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. And everyone, please like the video before you go. Okay, liking the video helps grow the channel. Thanks so much, guys. And.